Hello guys, welcome back to my 2018 NHL Power Rankings for November 23rd. Now, of course, in this Power Ranking series, I look through all 31 NHL teams, rank them 31 to 1 based on momentum and, of course, how I saw and what I saw from these teams last week. Now, just a little bit of a disclaimer, this series is usually on Thursdays, but because, of course, Thanksgiving was yesterday, I postponed it to this Friday, so it's going to usually come up on Thursdays, so just bear in mind that. Now, when it comes to this week's power rankings, it was very, very interesting. A lot of change, a lot of teams rising, and a lot of teams lowering in the power rankings. So let's just hop right into it. That's number 31. No surprise here. The LA Kings, they're at a 7, 13, and 1 record. A plus 0 from last week, meaning that they were last place last week. And while LA had a, I think they got a couple of wins, it's just not been going right for LA. The past game, they got absolutely creamed by the Colorado Avalanche. They lost, of course, Jonathan Quick early in the season, and then they had to get Campbell in net, and now he's injured. So now they got Cal Peterson and Peter Budai. Peterson actually playing pretty decent, but the goal situation is really what's bearing them right now, and even then, they're not scoring goals to support them whatsoever. At number 30, I have the St. Louis Blues. They're at a 7, 10, and 3 record. A plus 0 from last week. They were 30 last week, and no change from them, really. This past week, I did not see what I needed to see from them, and of course, they fired my heo. So hopefully, this next season, this next week for them is a turning point in their season because, of course, they had playoff aspirations, and so far, they have not played like a playoff team. At number 29, I got the Philadelphia Flyers. They're at a 9, 10, and 2 record. They're a minus 10 from last week, and oh boy, while they've gotten a couple points this week, it has not been what Philadelphia has envisioned, and certainly not what they needed. They start out the week losing the New Jersey 3-0, which is not a good sign. Then they lost in overtime to, uh, to Tampa, where they did come back, but they still ended up losing. And of course, that game versus Buffalo, where they just got absolutely creamed. Not a good week for Philadelphia at all, and while I think that might have been a little bit harsh on them at making them a minus 10. They have to have a much better week if they want to make the playoffs and if they want to get on a run here. At number 28, I got the Chicago Blackhawks. They're right now in an 8, 9, and 5 record. They're a plus 1 from last week, and while Chicago, I think, is getting a little bit better, and in the power rankings, they are getting better, Chicago still has not had the greatest week. They lost versus LA. They won versus, versus Minnesota, but again, they did lose versus Washington. And with Chicago, they have some interesting opponents coming up. It's going to be a pretty tough schedule, so while Chicago is a bad team, they're not going to get any breaks in the next couple of weeks, so they're going to have to earn every single win. At number 27, I have the Ottawa Senators. They're at a 9, 10, and 3 record. They're a plus 1 from last week, and they had a weird week, honestly. They won that one game versus Pittsburgh, which was seriously a defining win for them. Then they lost terribly versus the Florida Panthers, and then they lost again versus the Minnesota Wild, that game where they came back and made it 4-4. So it was an iffy week for Ottawa, and of course, Ottawa's kind of on a decline. They just traded away Chris Weidman, so I think there's going to be even more defensive relapses in the future. At number 26, I have the Vancouver Canucks. They're at a 10, 12, and 2 record, a minus 4 from last week. And oh boy, has this week not been good for Vancouver. They've lost 7 straight games, and it has not been what they have envisioned. They've blown leads. They have, during this losing streak, it's pretty much everything has gone wrong. And of course, they still got quite a few guys on the injury reserve. The last game, they lost versus Anaheim, which is an absolute ball buster. And for Vancouver, it really is not looking good in any area right now. Now. At number 25, I have the Edmonton Oilers. They're at a 10, 10, and 1 record. They're a minus 1 from last week, and it's been a pretty crazy week for the Edmonton Oilers. Of course, they fired Tom McClellan, they brought in Ken Hitchcock, and then that game for San Jose, it seemed to work a little bit, even though they're getting out shot to heck and back. They did end up winning in overtime. So we'll see what happens with Edmonton in the next couple of weeks. It's going to be really interesting to see what Ken Hitchcock does to that team. But in the last week, overall, it was really not good for the Edmonton Oilers either way. At number 24, I have the New Jersey Devils. Now, they're in a 9-9-2 record, a plus 2 from last week, and this was an okay week for New Jersey. They like, lost versus Detroit. They lost versus Carolina. You'd like to see at least one win in those two games, but they got a defying win versus the Montreal Canadiens, and that's what really propelled them a little bit. I really liked what I saw in that game from them, and guys like Pavel Zaka are trying to finally produce, which New Jersey really does need. And while I don't think that New Jersey will be a playoff team at this rate, 
I feel like they're starting to get a, a little bit on a roll here, and if they can continue that, they can maybe be competitive, but so far, they really haven't been. At number 23, I have the Vegas Golden Knights. They're at a 10, 12, and 1 record. They're a plus 2 from last week, and while the season in a whole has still been very, very disappointing for the Vegas Golden Knights, I feel like this week has been a little bit on track. You know, they've been inconsistent to say the least. They start off the week at with a 6-3 victory over the, Vegas, uh, over the Edmonton Oilers, which was huge for them. But then in the next game, they get stomped 7-2 to versus the Calgary Flames. But for the last game of the week, they did win in overtime versus the Arizona Coyotes 3-2, which was a big win for them. So while they weren't inconsistent, I feel like this is a good week for them to get back on track to hopefully make the playoffs because let's be honest, Vegas making the playoffs is always fun to see. At number 22, I have the Anaheim Ducks. They're at a 9-9-5 record. They're a plus 5 from last week, actually. And I liked their week overall, and they did get a couple of losses. They lost in overtime versus Toronto. They lost in overtime versus Colorado. Now, they did get a big win versus Vancouver, but really, that's a lot of points that they did get that they probably wouldn't have gotten a couple of weeks ago. So, I think Anaheim is in the playoffs for right now. So, when it comes to Anaheim, they're playing decent. They're definitely playing a lot better than they did in the first couple of weeks, which is definitely good to see from them. At number 21, I have the Pittsburgh Penguins, and man, what a weird week from them. They're in an 8-8-4 eight, eight and four record right now, or minus 4 from last week, and it was a pretty rough week for be, to be a Pittsburgh Penguins fan, at least. Now, the last game that they played was a big win versus the Dallas Stars, winning 5-1. to one. That's a huge win for them if they want to get back on track, but they had a couple of weird losses in that week, to say the least. They blew a lead versus the Ottawa Senators. They lost that game 6-4, to four, and that's okay. Okay, you blow some leads sometime, but then the next game they blew a 4-1 to lead versus the Buffalo Sabres and lost that game in overtime. So with Pittsburgh, they have a little bit of a trouble defensively, obviously, but they better crack down on that stuff if they want to make the playoffs because right now they are not on track to do so. At number 20, I have the Arizona Coyotes. They're at a 9-9-2 record, a minus 2 from last week, but I feel like uh, with Arizona, Antti Ranta is injured, I think, for a couple weeks now, and I've honestly liked how Arizona has played in this stretch. Darcy Kemper has been pretty great throughout this stretch as well, and I've liked what I've seen from him. They got that big win versus Nashville, I think, last week. It was something like that, but I really liked that win from them. Then they lost versus Boston, which is excusable. Boston is a pretty decent team, but then they lost to Vegas in overtime, which is a game that you probably want them to win. At number 19, I got the Florida Panthers. They're right now an 8-8-3 eight, eight and three record, a minus 3 from last week, and it was an okay week for Florida. Again, they went on that big winning streak before this, and this week it was okay from them. They lost versus New York, which is excusable because New York has been pretty solid this in the last couple of weeks. Then they had a big win versus Ottawa, pretty much a blowout, even though they only win 1-7-5, but then the game versus Tampa but it wasn't really even close at all. Tampa ended up winning that 7-3. So while I think Florida is on the right track right now, still right now Florida is not a playoff spot and they need to get better overall. And while they have been better in the last 10 games, I need to see a lot more from them. I need to see them prove themselves this next week. At number 18, I have the Detroit Red Wings. They're at a 10-9-2 record, a plus 5 from last week. And in their last 10 games, I think they're like 8-2. and two. Detroit has definitely been on a great run in the last 10 games. And since being last place in the power rankings a few weeks ago, they've been cruising along through to a pretty good record so far. And being over 500 is a definite win for the Detroit fan base. And I'm going to be really interested to see if they can continue the winning and they can continue that up because if they can get into a playoff spot, that would prove a lot of people wrong, especially me, since I predicted them to be last in the entire league going into the season. At number 17, I have the New York Islanders. They're right now at a 10-8-2 record. They're a minus three from last week's power rankings. And they had an okay week, at, to say the least. They they won versus New York to start out the week 7-5, to five, which was a huge defensive just a relapse. Then they lost 6-2 to two versus the Dallas Stars, which was really no good. And then for the last game of the week, they lost 5-0 to zero versus the New York Rangers. So obviously, both the goaltending and the defense, was really lackluster this past week. And if New York wants to continue being in a playoff spot in the Metropolitan Division, they gotta find some of that consistency, which in the last week they showed none of. 
At number 16, I have the Montreal Canadiens. They're an 11, 4, 7, and 4 record. They're a minus 3 from last week, and I think Montreal has looked decent as a team, but I think the consistency has not been there as a team. Now, the, in, this past week, they did win 3-2 over the Vancouver Canucks. That was their first game. Then they lost 5-4 over the Washington Capitals, where they blew a complete lead, and Washington came back completely, so that was a bad loss. And then they lost 5-2 versus the Devils, a team that you do not want to get blown out against got them blown out. So for Montreal, I feel like finding that consistency is going to be extra important for them if they want to make the playoffs. At number 15, I have the Dallas Stars. They're right now an 11, 9, and 2 record. They're a minor, or they're a plus zero from last week, so they're 15th in last week's power rankings. And when it comes down to it, with the amount of injuries that Dallas has had, I've kind of liked their performance in the past week. Now they lost, or they won versus New York that 6-2 game, then they lost the Rangers 2-1 and they lost over to the Pittsburgh Penguins 5-1. to one. But when you count the injuries that they have, like Klingberg and Hansel or, and Buffett and Johns, and especially on the defense, Bishop is injured as well, they've gotten in that point where there's going to be a lot of injuries. And they haven't really overcome that, but really when it comes down to it, that Pittsburgh game, Sidney Crosby came back. I felt like the Pittsburgh Penguins were going to win that anyways. And I think those are some games that you could say, hey, those are excusable games to lose. I think that is the case here, especially with how many injuries that they've had. At number 14, I have the Carolina Hurricanes. They're at a 10-8-3 record. They're a plus 7 from last week, so we had a big jump from them this past week, and I've, I have like what I've seen from Carolina. They had a big win versus New Jersey. They had a big win versus Toronto. They had a weird loss versus Columbus, which I would have rather seen without, without them having, but that win versus Toronto, I think, propelled them in this week's power rankings. I really like what I saw from them, and of course, with Malcolini in net, it would have been nice to see them get the win, and they did in conditioning fact. Fashion. And I liked what I saw from them in that game, and that was one of the main reasons why they've been high up in this power rankings. And at number 13, I have the New York Rangers. They're at a 12-8-2 record. Another, another team to have a plus 7 this week. And when it comes to New York Rangers, man, they've been absolutely amazing. I think they're 8-1-1 one one in the last 10 games. And when it comes to New York, they've really just booted out that rebuild phase that they had coming into the season. And I've really liked what I've seen from them in the past couple of weeks. Henrik Lundqvist has looked vintage Henrik Lundqvist and has looked fantastic. Georgie has looked great as well. The defense is starting to finally mesh. Guys like D'Angelo are starting to really develop. Pionk has looked great so far. And the forward group like Mika Zabinijad, guys like Kreider are really performing. I mean, freaking Chichols on a five game goal streak. And it's really all coming together for, for New York in this current winning streak. And of course, in the last 10 games, they've been straight brilliant. At number 12, I have the Colorado Avalanche. They're at its 11, 6, and 4 record. They're a plus 0 from last week, being number 12 in last week's power rankings. And I like what I saw from them this past week. They got a win versus uh, the Ducks. They got a win versus the Kings. They did get a rough loss versus the Capitals in overtime. I would have rather seen them win that. But when it comes to uh, the uh, Colorado Avalanche, they have had a little bit of an easier schedule over the last couple of weeks, I'd say. And they're starting to get some more easier opponents with LA and Anaheim. So it was expected that they win those games and certainly did and when it comes to Colorado I didn't really decline them in the power rankings or up them in the power rankings just because they won the games that they probably should have won. At number 11, I have the Washington Capitals. They're at an 11, 7, and 3 record with a mi their minus 1 from last week. But when it comes to the Washington Capitals, they've had a few big wins lately. They got a bit win versus Chicago. They got a win versus Montreal. And they got a win versus Colorado teams that they were supposed to beat. But again, they were, there were some close games. They let Montreal get a big win there. They did come back. But even then, I feel like Washington in the past week has played good. They've gotten wins. But again, and I still need to see that consistency from them that we haven't seen from them so far. At number 10, I have the Columbus Blue Jackets. We're now into the top 10, and Columbus leads the way in that marker with a 12 at 7 and 2 record. They're a minus 2 from last week, and they had a decent win, or a decent week, I'd say. They had a big win versus Florida, like 7 to 3 win, was which was pretty crazy. They won against Carolina, which was a big win for them against a division opponent, of course. But then when they lost versus Toronto, which Toronto was a good team, that's an excusable loss. So when it comes to Columbus, I still like where they are right now. They're leading the Metropolitan Division still even in that close race I like what I've seen from them this past season or this season so far and hopefully that continues in the next week for at least their sakes 
At number nine, I have the Boston Bruins. They're at an 11, six, and four record. A minus two from last week, but I didn't really put them outside of the top 10, mostly because they've actually played okay with how many injuries they've had. When you look at that defense, it's almost an AHL defense plus Tory Krug. It is absolutely abysmal. I'm surprised they've been even able to win one game in the last week because of it. That forward group all is still talented. You got guys like DeBrusque, Pasternak, and Marshan still there. You got Bergeron out for at least four weeks now. So in this next month, it is going to be make or break for Boston. If they're able to scratch out wins with this very injury riddled lineup. At number eight, I have the Minnesota Wild. They're right now in a 13-7-2 record. They're a minus two from last week. And it was a little bit of a scary week for Minnesota. They had some interesting games, to say the least. They started out by winning 6-2 versus Vancouver. Pretty good win for them. Then they had the 3-2 or loss to Buffalo. You would like to see that win, but Buffalo is a pretty good team now. Then you have that loss for Chicago, which is pretty rough. Again, Chicago is not all that great. And then they won versus the Senators 6-4, but they ended up blowing that lead and allowing it to be tied 4-4. They ended up winning that game late, but that was a little bit of a scare there, especially since Dumnik would have to be pulled once that game was tied. So, while Minnesota had a decent week on paper, I still think there's some asterisk with, with just the losses that they had and the losses that they could have had throughout the week. At number seven, I have the San Jose Sharks. They're at an 11, seven, and four record. They're a minus two from last week, but they had a decent week overall. They lost versus Toronto. They won versus the St. Louis Blues. They lost versus Edmonton. While that was an overtime, you definitely want to see the San Jose Sharks pull out a win versus Edmonton Oilers. That game is one that you probably want to have back if you're the San Jose Sharks, but they're still looking like a decent team, especially offensively, where they continue to roll and continue to play well. So for me right now, San Jose, I wouldn't really worry, especially when that goaltending starts to pick up, like guys like Martin Jones start to pick up. I feel like San Jose will start to rack up the wins a lot more, but the way they're playing offensively, I don't think there's really anything to worry about. At number six, I have the Calgary Flames. Now they're at another 13, 8, and 1 record. They're a plus 5 from last week, a big jump from last week, being 11th last week. And this week was pretty solid for Calgary. They started off losing 3 to 2 versus Montreal Canadiens. That was pretty rough, but the rest of the week was absolutely fantastic. They won 4-2 over the Oilers, which was a big win for them. A come-from-behind win in the third period, which was amazing. The Battle of Alberta, you definitely want to get a win there. Then they won 7-2 over the Vegas Golden Knights. A dominating win there for sure. And then they won 6-3 versus the Winnipeg Jets. Not an easy team to win against, and Calgary has certainly impressed me in the past week with how they're able to play and how the offense is really starting to get go going. And besides James Neal, a lot of the guys on that roster are starting to really, really gel. And at number five, I have the Winnipeg Jets. Right now, they're a 12, 6, and 2 record, a minus 2 from last week. And it was kind of a back and forth week for them. They started off losing 2 to 1 in the in shootout versus the Buffalo Sabres. That's a toss up, it's a shootout, anyways. They won their next game 6 to 3 versus Vancouver Canucks. Big win for them. And then they lost 6 to 3 versus the Calgary Flames, a game that you probably want to see Winnipeg win there. And while Calgary is 6 in the power rankings, I think the Winnipeg is the better team. So I think it was just one of those weeks where Winnipeg played three games, was not able to get the win in two, and it's pretty much just a toss up there, and hopefully for Winnipeg, they get right back on track the next week. At number four, I have the Buffalo Sabres. Yeah, the Buffalo Sabres, you are hearing that right. They're at a 14-6-2 and two record, a plus five from last week, and I think they're on in seven or eight game winning streak right now. Absolutely incredible what Buffalo has been able to do in the past couple of weeks now, and I've really loved what I've seen from Buffalo. Come behind wins, great goaltending, solid defense, and that first line of Jack Eichel, Jason Palmerville, and Jeff Skinner contending for the best line in the NHL, I believe. And with Buffalo, it's amazing to see how well they've done over the past couple of weeks. And I think they fully deserve to be in the top five of the power rankings for how well they've been playing in the past couple of weeks. And it's been absolutely fun to watch. 
At number three, at the Toronto Maple Leafs. They're a 15-7-0 record. They're minus two from last week. They were the number one team last week. And this this kind of week was, I think, more in line like the Winnipeg Jets, where they did get a couple of wins, but again, it wasn't a perfect week from them. They got a win versus Anaheim. They just squeaked it out in overtime. They got a win versus Columbus. Then they got a pretty ball-busting loss versus the, versus the Carolina Hurricanes. You would have liked to see a win there. But again, I'm being a little bit picky when it comes to Toronto. Since I had a number one last week. But this next week, let's be honest, will probably be another good one for Toronto. And they'll probably be back up maybe in the top two next week's power rankings. At number two, I have the Tampa Bay Lightning. They're at a 15-6-1 record right now. They're a plus two from last week. And this week was a little bit weird, a little bit shaky. But they did end up getting the, a couple of wins in the long run. They start out the week with a weird, weird win versus the Pittsburgh Penguins, winning that 4-3. to three. Then they had that weird win versus the Philadelphia Flyers, where they won 6-5 to five in overtime. They blew the 5-1 to one lead, which was definitely scary. But Chirelli ended up winning that in overtime. Then you got the loss versus the Predators, 3-2, which is excusable. Predators are one of the best teams in the NHL. And then they had a big win versus Florida, winning 7-3. So, while Tribe Bay had some scares in this past week, I feel like ultimately they did get it done, and they did get the points on the board, which is, of course, the most important thing. At number one in week seven, NHL power rankings, it's it's the Nashville Predators. Congratulations, Nashville. I think for the third time so far, you've been number one. Now, it was two straight weeks a couple weeks ago. Toronto was number one last week, and now Nashville claims its rightful prize back in number one in this week's power rankings. They're at a 16-5-1 and one record. They're a plus one from last weekend. It's what we've really been expecting when it comes to Nashville. They got a couple of big wins, but again, when it comes down to it, that win versus Tampa is really what propelled them and really was a win that they needed after last week. They really did not play all that well. This week was much better for them. Now, of course, with these power ranking videos, I want to hear from you guys. What do you think about my power rankings for week 7, 31 through 1? Do you disagree? Do you agree with any of my rankings? And of course, what are your top 5 and bottom 5 teams this week? Now, of course, if you want another grab video to binge watch, you can watch this video where I talk about five NHL players that have disappointed me so far. But, of course, that is going it for today, guys. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you haven't already. Again, comment down below your thoughts on this week's power rankings and your power rankings for week seven of the NHL season. And I'll see you guys in the next video or stream. Goodbye.